Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Let me get this here situated. Earlier today, I um posted on my... I posted in the community. So if you go and you look at... um. Hey, uh, Kara, or Kara, thank you so much. Thank you very much. I, 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 God bless you. I don't know if that's in USD or if that's another currency. Thank you. I posted earlier today in the um, community section where uh, if you had any questions for tonight, and I went through and I tried to grab some questions. Hey, CJ, share. I really appreciate y'all. Um, every Sunday night, I'm going to try to, at 9 p.m. Eastern, do these lives. If I can't make it, I'll try to post in there at least like three hours in advance that, you know, I'm tied up. If I have to go to one of my, you know, NBA or NFL clients games, sometimes they play on Sundays or if I'm with the family and we're out somewhere. But if we home, typically we're home during the school year because they in bed, you know, 8 o'clock, getting ready for Monday. But I went through and I grabbed some questions and I'm going to answer the ones that I was able to get to. I tried to just go through the first 10. But what you also got to understand is that if you ask me a question and I don't answer it, it's because that's not a question for me. Like if you posted the same question every day and you see I didn't saw it and I'm not answering it, it's just not a question for me. I'm not just somebody that just speaks on everything, trying to be a guru or expert, that's not me. I speak where the Lord has called me to, where I feel like he's gonna be speaking through me, giving me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding on that topic. I don't just try to talk on everything under the sun. So understand that some things for a therapist, some things might just be for another coach that focuses in a different area, not everything is, is going to be for me. And uh, Kara, y'all give Kara a round of applause. This sister, they got her a blessed and highly favored job. Really, God bless you. I got a question from Jackie, and Jackie, thank you for being a member. Jackie said, could you address the problem with men who have not prepared themselves or their lives to receive a woman or a wife, and they expect us to settle for the poor choices they have made. These are men who have nothing of value, like owning a home, never investing in anything, have no business acumen, have no vision or goals. The sad part is that normally they are good, decent men. I sent you an email weeks ago about this issue. Hey, thank you so much for sending that email. Please know that um, I don't get to see all the emails just because of the volume. Uh, Billy Jean, thank you so much. To become a member of the Blessed Tribe, in the description of this video, you'll see a link where it says to become a member. Or if you just click on my profile, then you should see where it says join by subscribe. Now, Jackie, addressing this, to be honest with you, it depends on where you are what demographic you're dating in and what you have to understand is that that is becoming more and more common with men just because of the way men are being raised you know a lot of men are not being raised they're just growing they're just growing up into adulthood but they're not being raised and i'm going to do a video on this about mothers marrying your sons so what's happening is a lot of single mothers are being stuck with the child and without having a father who's going to be there to add some balance because a man knows a man. So when a father's in the home, a man knows how to balance the love with the, the tough love. And so me raising two boys, I know when to be easy with them and I know when to be tough with them. But a lot of times when a woman is left to herself to raise them, she's dealing with her own pain, her own issues. So the last thing she wants to do is be the bad guy, is be somebody who her son doesn't like or her son wants to leave her and go stay with his daddy. And so a lot of women are marrying their sons 
and babying them and coddling them and, and giving them everything they need and bailing them out of trouble all the time, making excuses for them. My 12 year old today, my wife just had him doing homework for six hours because he had a test on Thursday. It's Mon it's Sunday. His test is on Thursday. He just studied for six hours, but not everybody's gonna do that. Not everybody's gonna teach their, their son how to be responsible and how to invest in themselves and how to be a man. And so that's why you're dealing with that issue today. Uh, CJ, a brother, one of the few brothers who in the blessed tribe who are a member. Hey, CJ, that really, really blessed me. God bless you for, you know, supporting like that. It's not a lot of men who support my message because it is very challenging because I'm a man giving the message. And so when I'm talking, I'm talking to myself, I'm talking to men and a lot of men just don't want to hear that. So I really appreciate you, CJ. CJ asked, hey, bro, I wanted to know how to date a woman with kids and be able to understand if she's a good mother or not. Since I've been back in the dating world, just about all the women I meet have kids. So trying to understand how to date and understand them right away. I don't have any kids, but since so many that do, I'm trying to understand what to look for when dating them, good and bad. Uh, what you got to realize, CJ, is one thing that is tough because what you're asking for. Uh, no, CJ won the 150 guy last week. That was Ulysses. Bit you, where you at? Where Ulysses at? But um, what you have to realize, CJ, is that when you ask that and you say i want to know if she's a good mother or not it's going to kind of work against you because a good mother she's going to put her children first and she's not going to neglect her children for a date so if her child has a game every saturday then she's going to that game christina jackson god bless you She's going to that game. If her daughter has a recital on Friday nights, she's going to that recital. So you're going to be sitting there and you're going to be like, man, we can't ever go on a date. We can't ever go on a date. And she's like, listen, my daughter got this on Friday nights. You know, if I get a sitter or if my mom can come over, then we can go out to the movies or dinner afterward. But if my mom can't, then, you know, it's nothing I can do. That's going to be the sign to where this woman, she's focused on providing for her kids. And then she's focused on speaking into the life of her kids. You know, she's building her kids. Rosanna Garcia, God bless you. I'm going I'm to get to your question here in a second. And she's focusing on that. And so you're going to come second to those children because you're not her husband. And she's not going to. So, so if you're talking to her after school, it's in a weekday. Kids and got out of school and it's. 4 p.m., 5 p.m., and she on the phone with you for an hour, two hours, and the kids in the background running around acting crazy. And she, hush, I'm on the phone. Hush, I'm on the phone. That's when you know you got a woman that is not a good mother, and she too desperate for a man. Now, if she say, hey, I got to do some homework for an hour or so with my kid, I got to get dinner ready, and then once after they eat and I get them in the bed, you know, I'm, I'll give you a call back. Now you know you got a woman who is about her business and she has her priorities in order. So that's what you have to look for. Is she neglecting her real responsibilities for you or is she asking you to understand my situation and what you're coming into? And at this time being, until we won, until we all the way locked in, then I got to have these things placed, you know, in order. Rosanna, hey, God bless you. Thank you so much for your support. Y'all helping me save up for this new iPhone 11. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do that pro because my hand ain't all that. I ain't got Shaquille O'Neal hand, so I might just get the regular iPhone 11. I'm still on this 10. That's why I be a little fuzzy sometimes, but y'all bless him. I'm going to have to go get this iPhone 11. We did a session with you. Husband leaves repetitively each time. I cannot prove he's with someone else, but feel he is. Of course, he denies it. I really cannot understand why the back and forth. 
it's hard to decipher his lies. I tell you what, he lying. He lying. Your husband lying. If a man keeps leaving over and over and over, and you can't prove he was somebody else, to be honest with you, you can't prove it just because it's, it's easy. You know, it's easy to cheat. It's easy for a man to get away with something like that. But what you have to realize is you cannot keep standing still. So if a man keeps running in and out your life, that means you're standing still. And if you're standing still, every time he comes back, he loses respect for you. So you got to love yourself. You got to respect yourself. And you got to be willing when he walk out the door to say, okay, cool. I tried it. We did coaching with Tony Gaskin. We did coaching with Joe Smith. With you know, We read this book, that book. And he still is not trying to work and get this thing together. I'm moving on. Hey, Shannon Barnes, God bless you. I don't know her. <clears throat> God bless you, Shannon. I really appreciate you. So understand that. Do not let them keep running in out your life. I can understand you have a break one time. You're trying to get it together. Three, four years later, you have another little two, three-day situation where y'all kind of separated and you, you gathering, but when you say repeatedly, he over and over keep leaving, he playing too much. Hey, y'all don't post no questions in here, right? Um, yeah, okay, y'all comment to each other, that's cool. I got to get through these questions that, that somebody, the people posted on the my post in the community section earlier today. Fab Cat, thank you so much for being a member do you guys, do guys see it as a red flag when a woman hasn't dated in a long time or is very inexperienced in dating? Now, when you say red flag, it could be yes, red flag in the sense of, oh, okay, got me one, got her. She, she's not going to know what's going on. But in the sense of red flag, like a negative thing, no, a man would prefer a woman who's not all that experienced, who's not, you know, been around the block three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times and know all every trick in the trade that she gonna be gaming him. You know, he would prefer a woman who hasn't dated you know, a whole lot because what that does is it allows him to have some first experiences with you. It allows him to kind of show you what he knows, to learn the natural things that you know and so it's not a bad thing. Now, a, a, a dog, a grown boy, sometimes those men, when we are in that space, we will, a man won't like it because he'll feel you won't know enough tricks in the bed. You won't know your way around the bedroom. And that's when he'll feel some type of way. But a real man who is mature and growing and he's looking for a real bond, real connection with a woman, then no, that, that doesn't matter at all. And even if you have been around the block 10 times, you don't have to tell him that, that you done rolled the bicycle backwards and that you know everything there is to know. You still can just, you know, ease your way into it without telling all your business. So really, hey, really appreciate y'all. Somebody, I don't know if it, Tiffany Johnson, I don't know if the green mean that you just joined as a member tonight. If that's the case, God bless you. I really support, support all that love that y'all showing. Ebony Flowers say, hey, Tony, thanks for doing this. My question is, should single with no kids consider dating men with kids? If so, what are the rules and what should we look out for? I am 31. I'm doing pretty well for myself and it seems like everyone has kids. I would prefer someone without children, but I am not sure if that's a preference or a standard. Now, Ebony, now you and CJ probably ought to connect. CJ is dating women with kids, but he doesn't have kids and you dating men with kids and you don't have kids both of y'all members of the blessed tribe sowing a dollar 99 a month so y'all sowing on good ground that means if y'all come together you might reap a harvest because you got good fruit y'all head on the same so i don't know cj and ebony y'all might be a connection 
Now, this is the thing. It is a lot of people who once, you know, start to get up there in age, you over 18, over 25, over 30, people start to have kids. So that is going to be pretty common unless you and CJ connect. But what you have to realize, the, the cons to that situation is if he has baby mama drama, if he is not a good man and he's not taking care of his kids and he's not, you know, doing right by his kids, then that's going to cause some issues when if his child's mother wants to, you know, get crunk and she she want to start some stuff and she in and out and he's dealing with that situation. Now, if he has, you know, split up with respect and he's handling that situation, he's helped her understand, he's given her closure, he deals with her with respect and he knows how to be a real man about his children, then that's a different situation. And now his kids may not really affect the relationship in a negative way. So you got to understand that as well. And but here's the thing. When you don't have children and you want somebody who doesn't have children, that is a standard. That's not a preference. A preference is if you want a man who is six foot tall. The reason why I say that's a standard is because if you have saved your womb because you are not married or because, yeah, because you haven't been married, then, and you want somebody who is the same, they have not gone out and had children out of wedlock and they have not been married, then that is a standard because those are life choices. Now, it's not to say that a man who was married and he has kids is a bad man because if he had if he was married and had kids in marriage, he did it the right way. But you don't have to accept everything that comes with that if that's not your lot in life yet. So I would say honestly, don't compromise that because if you go in and you just compromise now you know you're gonna be <clears throat> and you compromise you're gonna be unhappy because he may be having to deal with those kids a whole lot and you don't have children and so now you're like man we we're not on the same page we can't do a spontaneous date night we can't just up and go to the movies because y'all two different pages same thing with cj and his situation hey for everybody that you know hit that super chat where you do a, a gift a donation god bless you i really really appreciate you um kara i don't know if i'm hot if i'm saying your name right or wrong but god bless you uh glam rocks makeup posted a question what are some topics i can discuss on a first date been single and abstaining five years. I know not to bring that up, but I'm rusty. Need advice on what not to say or what should I say? Hey, that's a real good. That's a really good question. But to be honest with you, uh, you probably gonna need a one-on-one -on -one session. Um, just because it, you know, it's a long conversation right there in itself. But here's the thing. Here's the key when you when y'all dating, <laughs> Octavia. You listed overdraw that account last week. Ooh, what that thing hit me. But hey, you listen. I was gonna check with YouTube, make sure you listen, then try to do a charge back. Trying to, you know, stunt for the ladies and then go do a charge back. But I don't know if he did or not. I don't know how to check that. But Glenn Ross, here's the thing. The problem with a lot of women, what a lot of women do wrong on the first date, is a lot of women go and they read their whole resume to a man. They read they whole resume, they wear their degrees and their accomplishments and their single woman and their single and independent. They wear all that on their sleeve. Hey, D. Benz, God bless you. I don't know if I'm saying your name right or wrong. God bless you, D. Benz. You help me get the iPhone 11. Thank you. And they, they just, you know, they'll sit there on the date. And, you know, so how do you deal with, you know, meeting these women who they need you to pay for their date? You know, because I'm an independent woman and, you know, I got a degree. I got a master degree. 
And I'm going to end up, I, honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. I can't here tonight, but I don't need a man for nothing. I'm going to be honest with you. And so they go into all of this right here, and they have all these accolades, and the man sitting there, and she thinking that it means something, but really she's speaking out of insecurity. She's speaking out of insecurity because deep down she really upset that she has all these accolades and still single. And so she expressing this, and it's really coming from her insecurity, and the man like, wow. Whereas if she just sitting there and she talking and she having a conversation and she like, so, so what have you, you know, what have you been up, up to? You know, what do you do for fun? You know, what do you get into? Are you in any, uh, in any of those adult leagues or like fantasy leagues or like the, the leagues where you play basketball on Sunday? And then he go to talking about himself. Like, do you like it? Is it competitive? And then she asking more questions and he telling all the story when he sprained his ankle in the game. Wow, so it really gets serious. You sprain your ankle? And he like, yeah, you know, and I had to get some crutches. What? You was on crutches? That league is serious. I, I would love to catch one of those games. This the type of woman that now she get a man open. Hey, April, God bless you. God bless you, April. She get a man open and he go to talking and now he going to talk, talk, talk. So now the more a man expresses himself, the more he falls in love. Because what you got to realize, a lot of men been told just shut up. Just shut up, be a man. You don't get to express yourself. You don't get to say anything. So when you allow a man to, to open up and express himself instead of you doing all the talking and trying to read your whole resume, read your whole autobiography, your whole film script, and just showing him what role he need to play in your movie, then that's when you lose. So don't wear all your, you don't got to go through a list of your standards. He will see that you're not getting drunk. He will see that you don't need to go take a cigarette break. He will see that you're not cursing like a sailor. He will see where you stand. You know, he will see that you're going to church on Sunday. That's going to come up. So he'll get to see your standards and where you stand in this conversation without you having to say, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't curse. I'm not sleeping with a man until marriage. I'm going to church Tuesday night, Bible study, Wednesday night, Bible study, Sunday night. And you going through the whole list and you breaking it all down. And he like, Okay. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you want a cookie? Yeah, bring her a dessert. Because she's doing good in life. You know, and he's sitting there like that because you, you reading off. And that's what I see most women do is they start wearing it on their sleeve, you know, across their forehead. And it just, it break everything down. Let me see. Rosanna. Now, nah. hey, God bless you, Rosanna. God bless you. You're going to be the paid for a session. When addressing him leaving us, me and the kids, not contacting, picking up the kids, he says, I left you, not them. Why does he say that if he doesn't check for his kids? I make it easy for him to get them, but he doesn't. Always excuses. Now, see, one thing here is you trying to make sense of a grown boy. And trying to understand a grown boy is going to be like, you know, learning rocket science, trying to figure out the rotations of the moon and how you get to the moon and back in an hour. When you're trying to figure out a grown boy, a grown boy is never going to make sense to you because a grown boy doesn't even make sense to himself. He doesn't even know what he's doing and why he's doing it. So, you cannot make sense of insanity. You cannot make sense of immaturity, irresponsibility. It just is what it is. He was not raised. He just grew. He does not know how to be a man. He is not ready to be a man. He's not ready to be a husband. He's not ready to be a father. And that's why he's playing all the games. And you just won't be able to understand that. Like you will be literally banging your head up against the wall, you know, up all night trying to understand something that has no rhyme or reason any of that and so i want you to understand that you you can't really sit and and rack your brain you got to understand that he is lost he's hurting men like that a lot of times dealing with abuse from their childhood sexual abuse physical abuse verbal abuse abandonment being bullied, all different types of things. 
Hey, Coach Rod, I really appreciate you, Coach. And thank you so much. God bless you for that now. And and so that's what's going on with, the, with a man in that space. And he said, I didn't leave them. I left you. That's that's just, it's an excuse. It, it don't even make any sense. If you leave your woman and you're not coming to get your kids, that means you left your kids too. If he leaves you, but he called them every day, he on FaceTime with them, he come and pick them up, take them out on their little kid date on the weekend, then he didn't leave them. But technically, he still left them, but if he's active, then but if he's not answering the phone, he's not picking them up, then he lying. Somebody say he he lying to himself, he, and that's, that's exactly what it is. He, he lying to everybody. Um, in the description of this video, you'll see, I just added a new course. It's called, this is my year. I want you to pre-order it. Cause what it's going to be is the first 14 days of 2020. You're going to be able to watch a video in the morning before you get you get going and start your day. And it's going to be a short video, three, four minutes, two to four minutes. And it's going to have a prompt you know, for for your journal, for your workbook or for whatever. So go to the description and then click that link and sign up for the course. It's called This Is My Year. And it's 14 rules for a great year. And I want you to get in there because I, I just made it $25, which is already 75% off. So make sure you sign up for that. Somebody said they already pre-ordered. And then for the members of the channel, the people with this little green sign, which y'all sign color gonna change after you go to your second month, third month, fourth month, and so on. That that little sign change colors to show how long you've been a member. But for the members, I'm gonna take the videos from the course and to make it easier for you, because you're on my YouTube, I'm gonna put them in a private playlist just for members only um, who have signed up you know for the course um jesse j wrote a question and said hey tony any advice for a single mom i have a 10 year old daughter when i get into a relationship how long after do i introduce my daughter and how do i set up the meeting i've never introduced her to a man i need a little advice and that's a great question i'm glad you have not introduced her to a man and i want you to see um I want you to understand that 10 year old daughter and you dealing with men and not fully understanding men and the bestiality of some men that you will meet, not all men, but some men you meet have a dark side and they could be just really going through a lot personally and your 10 year old daughter has to be protected from these men. Now, this may sound kind of crazy to you, but honestly, I don't recommend introducing a man to your daughter inside of 12 months. And the reason being is that 12 months should be the time around the time that he's getting ready to propose to you. So when he comes and he tells you he wants to marry you, then that's when you can introduce your daughter to him when it's been 12 months or more and y'all are talking marriage and understand get beyond all the fairy tales it don't have to be renting a plane putting a sign on the back of it flying through the air saying will you marry me this day and age you can sit down and have a grown folks conversation and say like where do we go from here you know what do you think about marriage it don't have to be all these elaborate proposals and all of that just sit down and talk and and at that point when you know that it's serious that's when you can say well i want you to meet my daughter because i really you know love you i'm feeling you and your daughter what you got to understand she is a kid so she don't understand love anyways so it, all she care about is that her mom is happy and so if he's truly a good dude then and you love him she's gonna love him because she loves you and she wants to see you happy. She don't want to see you lonely, stressing out, you know, going through when she see a lot of her other friends, mama, with with them a man. And so kids going to be okay. 
You don't, it ain't like you got to go ask for permission because cause your child might be bad and just and selfish and tell you no just for the sake of it and, and you know what I mean and don't even really mean it. Don't even know what they're saying. So it ain't about asking your child for permission and all of that. It's about protecting your child, you doing the vetting, you getting to know this man. You can even sign up for a coaching session uh, with a man like myself and then do an individual session and get some feedback from an honest man about this man and his energy so that a man is reading him too if your father is not in your life or, or your brother. And any man in your life, you just need to be a sound-minded man with some wisdom and, and knowledge and understanding. You can't just go to any man who may be a grown boy getting high and getting drunk and then asking him for advice about a man because people speak from where they are. Uh, Tiara, hey, God bless you. God bless you. Power in the name. You, Tiara Rich. And with that with that gift you blessed me with, I see it, that last name means something. I ran into my ex's friend. Now, nah, hold on. Did you ask this question? Because I thought I saw this question in the thing. I saw this question somewhere else. Maybe, where you asked me this question at? I thought I had this on here. I ran into, now don't try to do no charge back because I already saw this question somewhere else. I thought I thought I might have had it on here, but thank you for your question. I ran into my ex's friend because of you. I was able to be cordial and we had a small conversation. Do you think he told my ex? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he told your ex. He absolutely told your ex. And he wanted to talk to you. And he wanted to talk to you because one thing about men is men are, most men nasty. And when I say nasty, I just mean horny. So uh, most men have a crush on their friend, girlfriend. Just because the way the, the mind works. Men are like that with their friend mama, with their friend sister, with their friend female cousins. Uh, so your, your ex-boyfriend, his friend will touch you and want and probably want to touch you. And that's why he hopped over in your line to start up this conversation. But yes, he also going to tell your ex that he saw you. And... The fact that you asked that question just is I'm going to elaborate on that, not to make you feel bad or anything. But that's the kind of questions I want y'all to get beyond y'all ladies, because y'all ask those kind of questions, which you shouldn't be asking those kind of questions. You got to I want y'all to get to the place to where your ex is your ex and you ain't worrying about what he doing, where he at, who he talking to. What he seen, what he hearing. I talked to his friend. Cool. Whoop de whoop. We chatted up. I'm moving on about my life. You know. But because when you entertain it, you give your ex power. And so, nah. You, I wouldn't want to accept your $15. Nah, I ain't going to hit no refund on it. But I'm saying... Did your ex just cost you $15? You know, you gave a donation of $15. God bless your heart. But that ain't the way I want to receive it. You know, I, I want to receive it because you saying, hey, Tony, I love the work you're doing. Hit this to help you get that iPhone 11. Stop being cheap. And that's probably where you said it from. But I'm just asking to everybody, how much sleep is your ex costing you? How much time? How much energy? How many thoughts is your ex costing you? And you got to try to make sure that you get beyond thinking about and entertaining your ex. We all do it. And so I ain't judging you or coming down on you. I'm just saying that's a, a point that I want you to be working on so that the next time it happens, you say, look, I ain't giving this no brain matter. I'm, I'm going to keep it moving. It is what it is. Uh, Michaela, hey, God bless you. Now y'all, y'all, uh, y'all, I've seen some interesting spellings of y'all names, so I'm just trying to infer what I think how it's pronounced. Yeah, and I'm a little country, so y'all forgive me if I say it wrong. But God bless you. That 555. That's so a blessing. He left me for another woman three months ago. Now he is coming back. And he's fit. Now see if you did a typo. 
Because it say he's 50. I'm 26. Now, if you're not a member, it probably would, you would probably have to give another donation. I don't want you to do that. Don't do that. But I'm hoping that's a typo. But it say he's 50. One of the other men I've been dating is spending holidays with my family. Hmm. Let me see. Okay. Now you got all kind of men. Uh, Michaela, you out here juggling men. A lot of these women struggling trying to find one man. You. Um, before I get to your question, I, I want to say thank you to. Uh, Zaman, uh, Yaman, Moy. Uh, Zaman, I, I don't know if that's your name, and I don't want to say your name wrong, but God bless you. Yaman, Zaman, examine. I really appreciate you. I really do. But I'm going to tell you this right here, and I spoke on this before when a man leave you. Now, if a man leaves you, if he left you, it's all the way over. It's all the way over. And I tried to use this analogy one time, and I had to argue with a woman. I didn't argue with her in the comments, but I saw it. I argued with her in my mind. And she was, because I said, a man does not walk away from his dream job. A man does not walk away from his dream car. I'm not going to give away a Rolls Royce, you know, unless I'm getting another car that just as nice or better. But I ain't going to give it away. And a lady tried to say, well, Tony, I done seen men give away they, they nice cars because it fell on hard times. I said, Lord, this is where we take stuff too literal. That's not what I was talking about. But my point is, is that if a man sees you as his wife, he's never going to leave you. Blasi, God bless you. I love if y'all put y'all the name on here. And so he's not going to leave you when a man leaves you. And if you say he is 50, listen, you got to run. You got to take off running, take off running. You hear me? And he ain't going to be able to catch you either because he 50, you 26. You got to keep it going. Oh, OK. So, Michaela, you became a member. OK, my current boyfriend is 51 and I'm 26 and we haven't slept together. Been dating for six months. And he bought me a car. I feel like he is trying to buy me. He is coming over for the holidays though. Uh, Michaela, I'm trying to see your picture. I don't, one of my gifts is being able to read people body picture, but I can't really see your picture. And I don't want to come too close to the camera cause I don't want people all in my flaws and, and stuff. But is it, is it did you meet that man on sugardaddy.com? Because I've been hearing about this. Because I just don't understand how, why or how. This sounds like a sugardaddy.com, Michaela. And I'm not judging you. but And I'm not literally saying y'all met on the site. But that's what this here is. Because for one, boyfriend and 51 does not go together. Because 51 years old should not be even having a girlfriend unless she's in her 50s or late 40s. But when a 51 is getting with a 26-year-old, that is a end-of-life crisis. I can't even call it a midlife crisis because that would say he living 102 years. But when you're 51 and you're single, you have not lived, you're not living a healthy lifestyle as a man so that's coming to the end of the life crisis and with a 26 year old that's what he will see is pretty hot and tempting pretty pretty young thing and so what he's doing is he's getting his groove back how stella got her groove back he's getting his groove back and that's dangerous that is dangerous and because 51 you got to look at it like this you 26 you still a baby so your prime might be in your 40s 
So when you 40, that might be your prime where you want to see the whole world. So that's 46. That's 20 years from now. He's 71. 71, he's not trying to travel the world. He at the most, he, you know, well, some 71 won't travel the world, but 71, it, women in their 40s is still getting it in. Still very vibrant, got a lot going on. 71-year-old man is not breaking nobody back. He is not getting a whole lot of action. At that point, he riding off into the sunset. And so what you have to realize is that it's been six months and he's bought you a car and um yeah that's a sugar daddy and he is trying to buy you and you plan yourself so you got to ask yourself you know what's going on that a man buying you a car in six months black hollywood natural god bless you tony you hilarious um you know what that just mean you got a good spirit because I don't, I don't be telling y'all jokes. That mean you got a good spirit. Cause I don't be telling jokes that when you find something like the queen seven is online dating safe. I got a video on online dating and, and no, it's not safe. I know you're going to hear some people say they met their husband on there and all of that. But for everybody that met their husband, it was a, it was a thousand women got scammed. So it's just it's just not safe. I told a lady the other day, keep that same energy you get online on the online date with and go outside with that same energy. And she was like, Well, I don't I don't have no energy. I just get on there and I just do me. I don't chase them. That's the same energy I'm talking about to go outside with. That same confidence, that same laid back, chill vibe, go outside with it. And, and stay offline. It do not do online dating. I'm telling y'all. I I was I had signed a deal with an online dating site. And that deal was gonna make me probably four million dollars a year. And I backed out the deal just because my heart didn't sit well with it. And if I was anybody else and just bought that money, I would have did it. You know, Steve Harvey did a deal, black blackpeoplemeet.com. And it seemed cool. It looked cool. But as I got in the trenches in coaching, I don't believe in that online dating. Only way I do online dating, I promote online dating if I create the site myself. And I have some things in there to vet people to where you got to do certain things, go through certain steps to get, you know, able to make matches. I ain't going to share it all because people be created my app. Um, Ayana, thank you so much. God bless you. He doesn't want a relationship, but continues to pursue. Uh, what that means is he wants friends with benefits. That means he wants friends with benefits. Tashawn, I see you up there. You popped in. I almost miss you. God bless you. Put your words to the test about online dating found that so many men online have many many emotional issues it's almost scary why god bless you right after i just got done talking about that i want y'all to understand hey nah angela you should create one for the people that have taken all your courses now if you want to help put up some money angela we will do that okay but i don't believe in crowdfunding really so when I make me some money, I'm going to do the app. I'm going to do the app. But um, the, the day now. But Tashawn, thank you so much for, for saying that. And y'all just going to keep trying the online date. Even though I'm telling y'all, stop doing this online date. Stop doing this online dating. Y'all going to keep trying that online dating. Till somebody come up missing. And it just is not worth it. I'm telling y'all, it's not worth it. And I could give y'all the whole game, but when I do that, women say, oh, that's doing too much. That's doing too much. I ain't got all that time. I am not finna be doing all of that. And so I be trying to help, but then y'all don't want to hear what it take. And so it's like I'm kind of left helpless, and I can't really help you. But what I'm trying to get y'all to understand 
is if you take care of your brain, your brand, and your body, you focus on you, you work on you. If that takes six months, if it takes 12 months, you working on your energy, you working on your mind, and you just walk outside and everything is aligned with your energy. A lot of women say they're ready, but they're not actually ready. They actually bitter on the inside. They actually upset on the inside. They actually not really happy. And that shows in the energy. But when you truly feeding your mind in the description, make sure you look at the links in the description. I put courses in there. A lot of women don't want, you know, to really do the work. A lot of men too don't humans don't want to do the work we ask the question because it make us feel good about it that it make us feel like oh i just did something because i asked a question but we don't really want to do the work of really learning and getting the knowledge and my online cyber security guard share share h she wrote to somebody today she wrote in the comments she said look tony to answer all these questions y'all ain't listening and share one line she one line but we a lot of times really don't want to listen but i'm telling y'all if you do the work and you just step outside it might be your mailman gonna be hollering at you get to the red light somebody gonna be hollering at you you go in starbucks get you a coffee somebody gonna be hollering at you you at a job your co-workers gonna be hollering at you you go to church the deacon gonna be hollering at you like when you truly do the work not just watching TV, complaining, you know, skipping the hard stuff, buffeting your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit. Do the real work and you're going to see men going to start jumping. It's going to be bad men too, but they're going to be jumping out the woodworks. And to Sean, to answer your question about why that's the case is because... It's a special type of man that gets online to do online dating. A, a man that is confident, that is whole, that is healthy, that is pure. He's not going to do online dating other than an experiment. Just to go on there and see what's on there and get some knowledge about. Just to, just to say he looked into it. That's the only reason. He's going to have, he's going to get on there and have maybe one experience and then he off of there. Because a man who is truly a real man, he's going, he wants to approach a woman in person and speak to her and ask her her name. He don't want to sit behind a computer screen or on a phone sending messages through a paid app trying to get to know a woman. He, he just, a man who is ready so that's why you have the men who are the introverts, the sociopath, and the y'all favorite word right now, narcissist. Men who are all those things that they go online to do online dating because they know when a woman gets on there, it's because she's not having any luck in the real world. So that means subconsciously her guards are dropping. She's getting, a, she's getting a little more desperate because she's not having success in the real world. So she's coming online so he knows he can get away with more. He, and that's why it's men who literally going to prison now because they done got millions of dollars from women through online dating and finally got caught. Uh, hold on. I think I... I, I miss some of y'all. God bless you. Kiana, hey, Tony, should women take men serious who are under 25? Same for women. Should she focus on herself until 25? Should we friend zone them? LOL, bless you. Now, you asking that question because you done seen, I done answered that question on um, what's called, right? I'm thinking on, a, uh, on the Instagram Q&A. But you absolutely correct. I don't even think people should be dating before 25. You cannot take a man serious before 25 unless he smell like Jesus. Unless you can sniff the spirit of the Lord on him. And I mean literally like you feel anointing oozing out that man. Then out his pores and just his aura feel anointed then you can't take a man serious under the age of 25. And, and as y'all looking at y'all experiences, what y'all going to see 
is some of y'all noticing that you can't really take a man serious at 30, 35. So 25, he had to be extremely exceptional. His mind going to be different. So you got to understand that. So and the same as a woman. Yes, 100 percent. Focus on you. A um, Leela or Layla. God bless you. Thank you so much. What are your thoughts on cereal baby mamas? Um, it, on the good side, he could be a hopeless romantic. On the bad side, he irresponsible. And so, so what you have to do to see which one he is, is you got to look at who he is today. If he's still toxic, if he's still getting high, if he's still getting drunk, if he's still clubbing, then he's he is toxic and he is an irresponsible he's an irresponsible man i can't even say lover he irresponsible but if if he's a good dude and he's doing right then he's a hopeless romantic and he was looking for love but didn't know what he was looking for didn't know how to identify it didn't know how to find it jim freak wish i found you years ago Early, 40 years old, divorced for four years, no kids. I wasted time with my ex, single and still yearn for a husband and children. Well, if if you're a gym freak, that the men definitely be in there. And two, I, it's sad, but the number one thing for men first is physical attraction. So if you taking care of you and, and you start to glow, and you have that glow and you have that energy, you have that aura, you have that confidence, that's going to start to attract men in your life. So you got to make sure that everything else going in your mind is aligning with what you say you want. And you can't mix the positive, you can't mix the sacred with the profane, meaning you can't mix the negative with the positive. You can't be working out and doing good, but then speaking negativity over your life, speaking doubt over your life. Michaela, God bless you. Nah, I, nah, Michaela, this is this your money or this that sixty year old man money? Your man then then dropped a bag on you, huh? You you got all kind of donation money. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. Um, you might need to stay with that sixty year old. He gonna be having you in this kind of place unless this this your ability. Now, God bless you. You really and you, the fact that you gave eleven eleven. That's that might be a sign to me. It's time for me to get this iPhone 11, but I ain't quite there yet. I'm hoping I get it for Christmas. Thanks, Tony. This other man I met in person, he's 53. We love going to museums, dining. He is very busy at work, but makes time for me. It's been two months. When will he ask me to be serious with him? Michaela, uh, you live in the old folks' home. You live in one of those uh, 55 and up senior communities? I, I, I just really not understanding where you meeting these elderly, not elder, not elderly. Don't I? Ain't, I'm not saying elderly because, well, it, well, this is why I'm saying this about men. So y'all ladies in your 50s, don't take offense. But a 50 plus year old man is different than a 50 plus year old woman because men, we put a lot more miles on us. When I was 22 years old, I had more miles on me than a 72 box Chevy. And I need you to understand that, that a 50 year old man is equivalent to like a 150 year old woman. And so that's why I say, where are you meeting these elderly men? She say she in Seattle. Cause you um, you know, you 26. You 26. And if you like them older, I would say shoot for your 35. Shoot for your 35. And the reason why age is important is because you want to be able to experience life together. You know, you're gonna want to ride a roller coaster. And you can't ride a roller coaster with a man in his 50s and 60s because he will have a heart attack and you you want you're going to want to surfboard like Beyonce was talking about 
And I'm being real with you on the other areas. And he's not going to be able to keep up with you. And so you really got to think about this thing. And, and here's what I'm sensing. And it's probably better for a therapist. But what I'm sensing is that you ha you ha there's some daddy wounds here. There's some daddy wounds here. There's some, there's some childhood situations here to where you more so seeking a father that you could sleep with instead of a husband. You looking for security. You want a security blanket. You want a covering, which can come from any man. But somebody said, maybe she's an old soul. No, she ain't no old soul. Mm-mm, ain't that old. Mm -mm. But them, them older men got a bag on them. And so if you in Seattle, them older men probably driving a nice car, got some good money. And one thing I find, financial security means a lot to a woman. But I, I really would recommend dating a little closer to your age. Just, I mean, just to be honest with you, unless you on some other stuff, but I don't think you will be here if you one of those uh, life insurance chasers, the way you're trying to get married and, you know, let them die off and you get a $2 million life insurance policy. I don't, I don't, you don't strike me as that type of person to be here, you know, blessing me. Uh, if you don't want the real honest truth, but if that just happened the way, if that's the way the mop flops and the cookie crumbles for you and you just happen to keep meeting men 50 plus, then, you know, that's your lot in life. I get it. You have to make the best of it, but I just would make sure that you're not overlooking the men in their thirties. That's good men. Um, and just being accustomed to these older men because they represent some type of security. Financial security. Um, and, and they get you addicted to, you know, the expensive dates and the expensive trips. Because all that stuff is, is stimulating. Lexi, Lexi Lou, God bless you. God bless you. It's not showing me everybody. So if you if you send a blessing in on the main line tonight and I missed you, Justice Gregory, God bless you. Boyfriend brought me a diamond ring, bought me a diamond ring and a necklace for my B-Day. I, I was wondering if you had a, uh, you probably had another post with that. Um, But that's, that's nice of them. That's nice of them. Diamond ring and necklace for my B-Day. That's real nice of them. Yeah, yeah. VJ Wilcox, thank you so much. Bless you. Uh, M. Robin said, online dating is dangerous. Had a stalker for six months. Hey, I'm trying to tell y'all. Uh, Michaela, now you, you might need your session so we could talk about these uh, seasoned men that you that you date. But, and, and the thing about it is, I know it's some women who they season and they upset with you taking the little bit of season and they got left and they in their 40s and 50s and they want them them older men and and you got a whole roster of them diamond l what ways can i show i'm approachable in public from the little picture i could see you got on yellow that's a great start right there and it looks you know that's vibrant it's inviting it says that i'm cool i'm confident i'm calm i'm, I'm here and the key is walking at a normal pace, not having your head down, not being on your phone, searching through your phone, not being on the phone, talking to nobody, talking to your girlfriend, your mama, your sister, and having your head up, having your head on the swivel, making eye contact. You're not cheesing ear to ear. So you're not walking around just like... <laughs> But you walking, you walking around, and you got a pleasant look, a pleasant look to where it just a little perky. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Somebody hold the door. Thank you very much. You in the elevator? How you doing today? Just like that, you just pleasant, and your energy is good. What happened is a lot of women beat themselves up so bad on the pillow at night, cursing God out, mad with God scrolling instagram getting jealous of everybody else instagram love and instagram you know relationships 
and they so mad that it's turning the energy upside down. And so when they go out in public, they might be dressed right. They might be doing some of the stuff, but the energy bad. And so they look at me because they're angry because now they're getting desperate or now they're getting frustrated and they're telling themselves, oh, he's sorry, no good men. These men ain't worth nothing. Sorry, man. You can't meet nothing these days. I mean, just men ain't worth two cents. Ain't worth the linen in his pocket. And now here go your husband. He coming. He finna walk right past you. And now he walking right past you. But because you just been you been cursing men out every day, when you look at them, you look at them like And you don't even realize that you just looked at him and he looked at you and he was thinking like, man, she look good. What, who, what a woman look good. And then he get up on you and he's getting ready to shoot his shot. But then he look at you up close and you look at him and you don't even process it because it's what you're telling yourself what's going on in your mind. I told my wife, I said, look, I'm going to be done in an hour now. I'm going to be off of here in an hour. She looked at me like I just looked at that, like I just looked at y'all. She's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now she, she said, no, take your time. Take your time. Um, Nasia. Nasia. I'm going to go with Nasia. God bless you. God bless you. Original name. Beautiful name. I'm a little country. Forgive me if I'm saying it wrong. If husband has the potential in his job to contribute more, but he complains about he is doing his best for two years, you done giving 70% and you've been given 70%, how should you proceed? There is no more emotional connection. Well, I would like to know what part of the world or the country you are in and to where you giving 70% because that sounds a little odd and he has the potential to contribute more but saying he's doing his best. He sounds like he lying. And you're not with a man. You're not with a man. And so what this is, what that means is that when a man, the way this should look, and I'm going to help y'all understand this. The way this should look when you in a relationship with a man, with your husband, not your boyfriend. Y'all got to stop expecting so much from a boyfriend because a boyfriend don't owe you nothing. Okay. It's a lot of women getting out of pocket thinking a boyfriend supposed to be paying their bills, paying their car note and all that. No, that's what a husband is does so uh bless brown beautiful any advice on youtube channels uh we'll have some business q and a's on other days maybe on saturday or something like that we'll do some business q and a's where i answer y'all entrepreneur questions but i don't really want to mix both of them up but when your husband is not providing when he's not putting up his money to pay all the bills what a man ought to be doing is paying every bill that his check will allow him to pay. And then after he's exhausted his check, then it's your check that y'all, you know, go to the movies on and y'all, you know, live life and travel and stuff like that. All the money should go into one pot and it shouldn't be, you know, he make this, I make this. No, we make this and then we pay the bills out of this and then we live do the fun stuff out of this and we save out of this. It shouldn't be, oh, 50 of this mine, 100 of this his. No, 150 you want. And when you marry and that's your husband. But when a man is not contributing what he should, what that says to me as a man is that he getting ready to leave. He's saving his coins so that he got some coins to fall back on when he leave you. Brown sugar glamour. Uh, y'all gonna have my wife think I'm in, in, in here cheating on her with these names. Now you got me calling y'all brown sugar and beautiful beauty. I a hey, God bless you for that. Um, I really appreciate your support. Hi, Tony. I'm Hammer. Can you talk more about men at the gym? Is it just lust when a guy shows interest staring 
working out near you, their friends smirking, LOL. Should it be taken seriously? Yes, you could take it seriously, but it's nothing for you to do. I mean, it's nothing for you to do. You keep doing you, but you be open, you know, in the sense of in my gym, we got a cafe. So that's where the conversations go down with the single men. That's where they really trying to shoot their shot or walk into the cars in the parking lot. They shooting their shot there, you know. Um, so you be open, like you be present. So you walking at a normal pace when you leaving and you really don't pay him any attention. You could look at him and just like, you know, look at him and kind of like, mm, how you doing? Just like that. There ain't no cheesing. So don't don't go to flirting, shooting eyes, cause that's when you start to looking loose, and and a lot of times men have experienced that, and then that woman end up sleeping with him on the first night. So if you over there, and y'all in the gym, and while you doing your squats, you know, and you looking over there, <clears throat> you doing all that, then guess what? He he gonna be like, yeah, she ready, she ready. And, and and he gonna come try it and if you didn't gave that away and made him feel that way and you really are ready in the sense of you okay with sleeping with a man just because the chemistry strong now you lose it all so instead be pleasant nice little pleasant look how you doing uh, are you using this weight and and you taking the weight that 20 pound that he using and now you're doing your dumbbell presses. And then you put it back. Thank you. Excuse me. Just like that. Just cordial. You know, classy. Comfortable. And you can meet. You can meet uh, your husband in the gym. You really can. Um, Cassie. Gabriel. Where do I find real men like Caleb Curl and you? Now, I'll tell you. It's a lot of men out there. Let me stop lying. It's not a lot, but they are there. The, the problem is, though, is he's going to look like, he may look like Urkel, and your influence makes him Stefan. He may look like Clark Kent, and your influence makes him superman and so what i'm saying is a man like my wife didn't find me like this when my wife found me i was wearing the dicky shorts uh big old shirt i had six gold teeth i had four on the top two on the bottom i had long gold teeth um i was a wannabe goon but I had the same mind. I had the same wisdom, but I was packaged different. I had the fake diamond necklaces. I had two cell phones. I had an Impala on 22s. And I was dibbling, dabbling in the streets. But I had the same wisdom, but I was packaged different. And so that's what I mean. Like, you you not going to meet a ready-made man. He's going to, he going to have the character. Like, it's kind of like the late, great, Nipsey Hussle. You know, this is, and I use him as an example, God rest his soul. But I, I use that to paint a picture of how you see men, even like Tupac, God rest his soul. You see these men who, when you look at them, you may say, man, it's a thug, this a goon, or this, a, this something this, this something there. You know, but you got to look at their character. And so what my wife did with me is she saw me and she saw the goals in my mouth and she saw, you know, the goatee. She saw all this and she said to me, she got to know me and she said to me, she said, that ain't you. That ain't you. You ain't, you ain't no thug. You ain't no goon. You know, you, you, you different. You better than that. You smarter than that. And I was like, wow, you just pulled my card. You just told me I'm out here fronting. And that's what helped me change my life. And so that's what you got to realize. Based on your coaching, uh, Moni, thank you so much for your blessing. Based on your coaching experience, what usually happens when someone dates a fellow church member? 
I've never tried it, but I know I will be asked out. It, it, I, I cannot remember a situation where it's worked out good. Dating in the church, the devil be in the church working. There are some success stories, I'm sure, but a lot of them turn out bad. And so you got to be very, very careful, very, very diligent. You really got to take your time. Don't even call it dating. Don't even call it dating. You know, if you meet this man and, and you got to watch this man, if he say something to you and he won't talk to you, just watch him at the singles meeting, watch him on the usher board, you know, watch him around the church and just try to read everything you can about him before you dive in because what I'm dealing with the most in coaching is people having to leave their church because they done broke up with this person and it did not work out. And now the, the, the boy, he lying on her to other members. He going, getting the pastor and the deacons on his side. She got to leave the church because people looking at her crazy because he done got everybody on his side thinking she a Jezebel spirit and she lured him and baited him in. So I just don't recommend it unless God truly, truly speak to your, your spirit about this man. Gloria, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you for your, for your support. Um, now, this thing where people is donating, that's called a super chat. And, and I don't understand it fully. It just shows me. And I really don't know when and how and where I'm going to get that. It don't come to me. Like, it's not going right to me or nothing like that. I'm guessing it come when YouTube pay you um uh, with your ads but i just thank y'all god bless you because youtube put ads on some of your videos if they're able to if an advertiser want to put their stuff on your videos and you make like you know some cents on the dollar and then it add up and it get more and more and more and um so i really thank y'all and this i think is in addition to that so hopefully this time january i had an iphone 11 because y'all really supporting me i really appreciate it Gloria say, I'm 43, no kids. Some men shy away from dating me because I don't have kids. Um, it's not that you don't have kids. So it, it's something else in there. It, it's something with just the, the, the energy, the perception that we don't have the gift to see ourselves through the eyes of others. And that's why I come in as a, as a life coach, as a relationship coach. And with all of my uh, women clients, female clients, however word you y'all go by, I'll use that male, female, men, women. When I'm coaching a woman, I will ask her if she's single and she's looking, I will say, look, send me, a picture of you so I could put a face with a name and I'm going to give you feedback from the male perspective of what your energy says to me. It's going to say different, a little different in person. And I will look at the picture and I'll tell her what I'm feeling from her. And she'll say, wow, that's crazy. It sounds like you grew up with me. Like how in the world you see all that in a picture? That's just one of my gifts. I don't understand. Maybe because I grew up almost like a mute. I didn't really talk to people unless it was just my friend group. I was really quiet and shy and I just observed people. And I learned over time that our personality is shaped based on how we show up in the world, how we look essentially, because how we look determines how people treat us. And then how people treat us determines how we feel about ourselves and how we feel about ourselves determines how we show up in the world, what we give off when we step out. And so when this happens, this is how a man is reading you. So based on what's going on between your ears, it'll determine how you showing up in the world. And a man is reading you like a novel because a man's gift is to read people in a moment because men are also the warriors. Men are the hunters. So men have an ability to read what's in front of them very quickly because men have a killer instinct, a hunting instinct. Because God knew we would be going to going to war and going to hunt to bring home food for the family. So when a man reads you, it's totally different than when a woman reads you. And that reading comes from what's going on in your mind. And a, a, a woman coach 
can't even tell you this because she, a woman would never be able to look at you the way a man looks at you to see you the way a man sees you because we, we, we made totally different. Hey, I'm on here talking too much. So I got to go in five minutes. Cause I don't like to do these things more than an hour and 20. <laughs> I bumped into a dude on live the other day and that man say he was on live five hours. I said one day, one day, I one day, but uh, look here, you know what? I had a couple of, if I could get through this, I saw Angela Ray in here ask a question. Um, Nicosia, Nicosia, or Nicosia, um, Elisa, your picture is too small, so I can't, I can't see you right there, but you look like a handful, that little picture right there, I can see, you look like you're a cutter man, you look like you're a cutter man, Nicosia, I'm dating my boyfriend, he's talking about marriage after three months, the first month, he wanted to be exclusive. It's been almost seven months. Thanks to you, I've been doing pretty much everything you've said. I've learned so much from all your books and videos. My problem is my past marriage, fatherless and bad relationship with mom. I have some insecurities and don't want to run this man off. Please guide me with answers on insecurity, how to love him wholeheartedly. You are so right about everything, especially how a man knows when he first meets you if you're his wife. Thank you so much. You've been my greatest inspiration for the past two years. Hey, thank you so much for sharing that. Now, you may have to talk about this in a little deeper fashion because when I read this, there's a couple red flags to me. And so the couple red flags is that although a man knows quickly if you his wife he doesn't necessarily move that quickly so he may know it but that doesn't mean that he's talking about marriage after three months it also does not mean that he wants to be exclusive after one month now that is also can be true when he knows i want to be exclusive right away with my wife and but marriage mm, i wasn't talking marriage you know, after no three months. And I knew she was my wife after our first six hour conversation. And most men who get married can say that, that I, they knew she was the one rather quickly, but that doesn't mean he moves as quickly. So what you got to do is you got to kind of pump the brakes. So don't focus on loving him wholeheartedly and all of that. In a case like this, your insecurities actually serve you because it helps you to slow down. It helps you to kind of chill a little bit. So don't worry about that. That that's that's serving you right now. Where insecurities hurt you is when you blame a man or you accuse a man for something that he has not done and you accusing him just because of your past. So you may think something, you may feel something, just don't let it come out your mouth. Don't let it come out your mouth and then it's not damaging you. But that's actually protecting you right now because he's moving very very fast and um it's just not that's just not normal so here's the question that i would ask you is does he need you does he need you for a place to stay does he need you financially do you earn more than him um did he just come out of a relationship and you are a rebound so he he needs some emotional he needs a band-aid you're his band-aid um, does he need citizenship wherever you live? Is he does he need to get married to speed up the process of his um his citizenship? So you got to ask questions. Does he need me for anything other than love? And if the answer is yes, then all this is a red flag. If the answer is no, then okay, it could be the real deal. But you still just kind of pump your brakes. Don't sleep with him. Don't go to serving him. Don't go to cooking his meals. Don't go to doing his laundry. Don't move in together. You just date. Strictly date for 12 months. Strictly date. Um, Somebody say how I sign up for coaching. You have to email. Now, coaching is one-on-one. -on -one. So, do not email in and then email him back. 
Oh, I ain't know it costs. People be writing in for coaching. I'm like, you think I'm on the phone with people one on one for free? And this, and I got a fa- whole family to feed, and I got to be with my family. You think I'm just on the phone with a thousand people? So understand now, y'all understand coaching costs. You also got to understand a beginning coach. A coach just starting charge fifty dollars an hour to a hundred dollars an hour. I'm twelve years in, and I'm a celebrity coach. So that means that I'm on call. That means that my pay scale is a little different. I I do keep things affordable. If you got a credit card or a savings, or you make a a, a decent living, so correct. So my coaching is two hundred dollars an hour, and in twenty twenty it has to it has to go up because I have to move it up with the demand because I only try to coach ten people a week. So if forty people need coaching, and all forty can sign up, that let me know that it's time for me to go to the next scale. And so right now in 2019, coaching is $200 for a one-on-one session, which is very inexpensive considering people who have my brand size are at $500 an hour, $1,000 an hour. I saw a guy today who he probably, his brand probably half the size and and he has not done 20% of what I've done in my career and he charged $1,000 an hour and so i i try not to get ridiculous but um at the same time you know i don't i just don't want y'all to be misled so one-on-one coaching you have to email support at tony gaskins.com support at tony gaskins.com that's an email i saw somebody pensy now see i'm trying to get off of here but Y'all got me like a dance on the pole now. When y'all when y'all throw that that donation on there, I go to seeing that iPhone 11 and I said I got to keep a hey, another song that came on. I got to stay up here. But no, I'm I'm, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Lord forgive me. Lord forgive me. If you if you dance, I, Lord forgive me. I'm not making light of, of that stress of your career. Please forgive me. Pensy dated a guy for three months. Took a vacation together. When I voice my concerns, things change. No contact for a week. He reached out, but still hasn't explained why he went MIA. He's MIA again. He said he loved me. Hey, uh, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much for your support. Um... Uh, You probably weren't on here earlier when I said, um, so I'm going to say it again because I know you weren't on here. When a guy goes MIA and you didn't cheat on him, you didn't beat on him, you didn't steal from him, like he just disappears because you question him, because you held him accountable, because you check him for something, you express your concerns and he went MIA, that means he's trying to train you. So what he is doing is he's saying to you, listen here, don't question me. Be happy that I'm here in your life, that I'm even dealing with you, and don't question me. Don't ask me nothing about nothing. Just shut up and be happy that I'm here. That's what he's saying when he goes MIA after you didn't check him after you didn't said something and when he and if a man does that over and over and over that's abuse and that's not your man that is not your man you are a placeholder for another woman that know how to whip him into shape because you're not whipping whipping him into shape because you're not his wife you're not the one that's meant for him a man will grow and change for the woman that he's intended for if a man is not growing and changing for the better of your relationship, then you holding somebody else's husband hostage. So you got to release him so you can attract your your husband, the man that's going to love you and respect you and be his best self for you. 
Lexi Lou, hey, thank you. You done came back. God bless you. I say, I, I see you say you got to get your question in because I feel like the last time you, you sent me a blessing, you just sent me a blessing. But I appreciate you for posting a question. And uh, don't nobody else donate. Please, don't nobody else donate. So when I get done with this here, I could go on and get on off of here. And because y'all working me tonight now. So I really appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much for the love and support. Now, the beauty about YouTube is they don't cut you off. Instagram, raggedy butt, they cut you off at an hour. YouTube let me still talk. See, YouTube, YouTube, and, and this right here, these donations, YouTube get um a percentage. I think 30%, 30 or 40%. So, YouTube know what they doing now. That YouTube now. Hey, I'm here. If a man offers to pay for my coffee, it's hard for me. Want to get past that. Past emotional abuse issues. Paid for everything. Um, Let them pay for your coffee. But see, here's the thing. is, is You have to have a balance as a woman to where you get to the place. To where you get to the place where... No, too Bella. Let them keep on blessing me now. <laughs> Honestly, I, I'm doing what I love. I'll be here 10 hours for free. I've been saying forever I want to do a 24-hour marathon for charity or something. But I, I, I really love helping people. And it's just a blessing that YouTube created this for servants, for helpers like myself. That's a blessing. But um, to answer your question is you have to learn how to accept your blessings but then call it out when you realize it's a snare so what i mean by this is every woman has to get to the place to where you have a balance to where just like a man has to learn the balance between the lion and the lamb a woman has to learn her balance you know between your lion and your lioness to where you get to the place to where you can be nice and you can accept him paying for dinner. You can accept him buying you something and being nice to you and doing for you. You can accept it. But and when he comes and he thinks that he gets something in return for that, when he comes and he shows that he did not do that from the right place of his heart, then that's when you got to check him and let him know. That's when you got to be. Oh, hold on. Hold on now. Hold on, brother. Um, we, we, I, I'm not sleeping with you. You you thought that because you paid for dinner that we were gonna be sleeping together? No, no, brother. Um, that's not how that works. And he may leave you, he may ghost, he may be gone. Bye. You got a free meal. And don't feel guilty about that. Eat that meal good. Whatever he buy you, whatever. Now what one thing a lot of men do is they say, Well, give me everything I bought you. Give her everything I bought you. Give me all the purse back. Guess what? Don't get attached to anything a man buys you. That's not your husband. Even if it is your husband, don't get attached to anything. Here go every purse you ever bought, every pair of shoes, every everything. A lot of women, they get attached to it and want to run off on the plug. They want to keep the ring. They want to keep the bag. They want to keep, no. Give it all back to them. Let them know that you can't buy me. Let them know that material things don't move me. Let them know that I'm a boss and I can get to my own bag if that's what I got to do. I'm not a woman on no street corner that you think you could throw a purse at or a fancy dinner at and, and then all of a sudden I'm supposed to be in awe on my back spread eagle. No, you got to let a man know that only thing going to move your meter is his heart and his energy, his love, not, not his money. So let a man buy your coffee. Just watch him so he don't slip nothing in the coffee. But let them buy the coffee as long as you got your eyes on them. But let, let them do it. Because as a real man, that's what a real man going to want to do anyways. Real man is not going Dutch. Well, if his money ain't right, he going Dutch. But if he got money, he going to pay for the dinner. And he going he to, every day I'm looking for something I can get my wife. Even if it's a $12 shirt from Target, from Target. Yeah, it's Tarzay if I'm feeling bougie. But every day I'm looking for something just because that is a love language. And so I'm doing that. But then I'm also massaging her back. I'm also playing in a house. I'm, I'm getting up 10 o'clock at night nine, uh, to, to go to Starbucks and get her a hot 
non-fat chai tea latte that she loved. So I'm um, every day when you become a real man, you looking for ways to please your woman. So let a man do all that. And when he and that's one one thing my wife taught me and how she got me. Hey Jasmine Watson, God bless you. God bless you, Jasmine. God bless you again, Jasmine. I, I don't know which one you clicking, but one of them that you click, you could ask a question now, Jasmine, if you got a question or you just trying to bless your brother. God bless you. One thing my wife taught me is that she, Tony, it's been an hour and 30 minutes. Glenn Ross, hey, you still here with me, huh? You still here rocking with me. If you could be here with me for an hour and 30 minutes, then who am I to not be here? You know, because I don't, y'all, if you have to go to somebody's job tomorrow, then y'all, y'all could watch the playback. Fortunately, I work for you, so I don't have to, I'm not going to nobody's job tomorrow, but y'all could scroll to this point and watch the playback. But, um, one thing my wife taught me is that she was so nice. She was so nice. She was so fun. Her conversation was so amazing. Her energy was so pure. She did not argue. She did not uh, debate. Like when we were getting to know each other, she didn't take no time to go back and forth. Cause she was like, this is, I'm, I'm getting to know this man. Like I'm not finna be stressing myself trying to argue about something I disagree with. So she just let me talk. And then she talked. Um, Latou, uh, ask your question, Latou. Latou, Juan Gelatin. One one July time. Um, post your questions. I keep an eye out for you. If you post it earlier, I'm not reading questions while I'm talking. So if you post it while I'm talking, I would not see it. So y'all gotta wait till I finish talking, then pop the question in there. But my wife, I she was so friendly and so nice. I was like, okay, so I probably could touch her. I probably could touch her. So let me see what we can make happen. And so when she let me spend the night, I'm thinking. Okay, because she's been so nice and friendly. And when I tried to make my move and it was too early, she kicked me right on up out that bed. You hear me? I mean, I saw a whole nother side of her. I'm like, whoa, you've been so nice. April, good night. God bless you. You've been so nice and kind. What in the world? Where this coming from? But she showed me that she got a balance. She showed me that I'm peaceful and, and I'm loving and I'm kind, but I'm a real one. I'm a real one. DW, God bless you. Somebody said, um, Coach Rod say, if his money ain't right, he don't need to be dating. A real man love paying for a date with the right intention. It's insult that man go Dutch with a woman. I feel you. I feel you, Coach Rod. I feel you 100%. 100%. I used to be a grown boy. I was out there dating. I'd take somebody and spend that $60, $70 on that steak. With the wrong intention. And then be mad. Hey, God bless y'all. I, I need to go. It's been it's been an hour and a half. I got these lights on. These lights starting to make me sweat. Oh, man. I told that, the lady who had a question. I told her I look for her question and answer her question. And now I'm running off on the plug. Now, see, the one thing people do to me, even on the Q&A. Now, Latou. 1031. Let two. You say, can you please answer one question for me? And, but I don't see your question, so don't be mad if I'm if I got the gold now. Okay, I'll find your question. Why is it that a man says he all of a sudden isn't a texter when he used to do it before? And why do guys like IG female pics and get mad at your likes and comments? You know, one one of the themes on my channel, what I've been doing, if y'all notice, I'm kind of trying to do why do men, why do men, why do men. A lot of my videos say why men do this, why men do that. And the reason why is because I get so many why do men do this. And to be honest with you, it's the hardest thing in the world to answer because when some 
at certain points in our life as men, we don't make sense to ourselves. Like we don't understand why we're doing some of the stuff we're doing. So me trying to articulate it is extremely hard. And then the answer that you give, it does not make sense to a lot of women. And so the women, oh, you making excuses for a man. Now, the reason why he's telling you he's not a texter, the question is, is, is he a talker? So if he's not texting, is he replacing the text with a phone conversation? If the answer is no, then that means that he too busy texting other women and don't want to be texting you because you taking up text time and he can't spell that good to be typing between you and somebody else or you texting while he on the phone with her. So that's what that is. Now, if he said, don't text me, but he calling you and y'all talking for an hour, two hours, then he trying to mature the relationship and go to the next level. If that's not what's happening, then he getting ready to, to meet somebody else and move on. And the part about guys liking IG female pics and get mad, the reason why a man get mad at your likes and your comments is because he knows what those likes and those comments mean. And the reason, the same thing he accusing you of with your likes and comments, that is exactly what he's doing with his likes and comments. The only way we, um, the only way a man only like a woman picture on Instagram to get her attention, to say, I'm, I'm here, I'm looking at you and I hope you know that I'm looking at you. Unless it's like a friend, a true friend, family member, something like that, then, you know, it's it's to get her attention. Tashawn said, go to bed, Tony, and get that iPhone 11. Thank you for your wisdom and for helping so many of us become wiser women. Hey, thank you, Tashawn. And you and you bless me again. God bless you. I, I, everybody that, that bless me, all of you that's members and all of you that that are not members but you did the gift tonight hey thank you so much i'm really praying that god pour out over your life and that he just open up the windows of heaven and bless you so much that it's pressed down running together uh shaking together and running over how they say in the good book and i, I really really mean that from the bottom of my heart because you know you being here with me and talking with me and sending these questions and allowing me to fulfill my purpose you don't have to do it you don't have to do it and for you to support me you don't have to do it you know and i just thank you for that so hey hey thank you for receiving it god bless y'all and we will talk soon we did an hour and a half one day i'm gonna do like that guy i seen the other day he did five hours but my voice already about to be gone hey i hey i feel you God bless y'all. We'll talk.